let's go exploring in the world of the invisible. A world that you can find in the water of any nearby pond. A world so small that you can scoop it up into a jar. Your passports, an ordinary microscope, perhaps a guidebook on microscopic pond life, and above all, a sense of curiosity and wonder about the things you're going to discover. This small animal from the world of the microscope consists of only one cell formed of protoplasm, that mysterious substance of which all living cells in plants and animals are made. In protoplasm is the secret of life. We know much about its physical and chemical nature, but we've not been able to solve the basic riddle of what gives it life. This bit of protoplasm is a complete animal named amoeba. Its shape changes constantly. It moves toward food simply by flowing in that direction. It eats, digests, and reproduces as all animals must do. Here is another one-celled creature called Euglena. But is it a plant or an animal? As you can see, it's there. Here one is seen as the lighter spot on the left, inside the parent colony. Eventually, the sphere bursts and releases the new colonies. This jack-in-the-boxes are one-celled animals called Vorticella we can see right through it. Yet, it performs all the functions of life that a human body does. Like many small animals, it carries its skeleton on the outside. It has a mouth, throat, and it chews and swallows its food. These active little animals are still more complex than the rotifers. Their bodies are highly developed with a brain and a nervous system. They're called cyclops, after the mythical giant, because they've only one eye. Most of the animal is enclosed in its outside skeleton. The digestive tract shows a continuous pumping motion, which pushes food through it, just as in more complex animals. These animals are divided into sexes, male and female. The female produces a large which we see here in two clusters. A relative of Cyclops is a larger animal, Daphnia, often called the water flea. It's a tiny member of the crab family, about the size of a pinhead. It moves by using two feathery antennae. It's a strict vegetarian and eats small water plants called algae. This animal, too, has an outer skeleton, which covers most of its body, including its legs. It has a heart, which we see here, beating in slow motion. Actually, the heart beats about 280 times a minute. The female carries her eggs on her back, inside the skeleton. After the eggs hatch, the young slip out. These beautiful underwater branches are the homes of tiny animals whose Greek name, bryozoa, means moss animals. Each animal builds a tube-like house for itself using secretions from its body. All we ever see of the animal are the organs which come out to catch food. Another wonderful sight from the world of the microscope.
Perhaps you recognize these. They're mosquito larvae, which begin their lives in water. Unlike the other animals we've seen, they breathe air, using a kind of snorkel that sticks up through the water's surface. So you can see that a film of oil on the surface will cause the larvae to suffocate. This ferocious little animal, hanging from a strand of algae, is named Hydra, after the many-headed monster of mythology. It's about a quarter of an inch long and looks like a narrow tube with a mouth at one end surrounded by tentacles. Some hydras have permanent guests, one-celled animals that live on bacteria attracted to the area. They spend all their time running up and down the body of the hydra. Hydra may reproduce by budding. A new animal grows from the side of the parent. One animal may produce more than a hundred in a few days by this method of reproduction. Also, if one's cut into pieces, every piece will produce a new animal, like the mythical monster whose name it bears. These tentacles can entangle and hold the Hydra's intended victim. We'll soon see an exciting fight to death as the Daphnia swims too close. Tentacles contain poisoned darts, which are coiled up inside special cells until they're released by the approach of the prey. Eventually, the victim succumbs to the poison the tentacles will draw the prey into the tube-like stomach. And here is Hydra with his victim inside. Let's take a closer look at some of the plant life in this microscopic world of water. The smallest are algae called diatoms. They exist in many beautiful shapes. But just how they are able to move about is still one of the mysteries of science. These plants contain chlorophyll and manufacture their food with the aid of sunlight. It's the same process, photosynthesis, used by all green life, whether the one-celled euglena, a soybean plant, or a maple tree. Sometimes they join to form chains which move about in ways so unpredictable that the name of this group of algae includes the Latin word for paradox. Diatoms, along with other tiny plants and animals, some of which we've just seen, are called plankton. They're the beginning of a chain of food in which larger animals feed upon smaller forms until eventually some of the larger fishes become food for man. And here is one of nature's deepest mysteries, the process of reproduction speeded up by the camera. This one-celled plant, a desmid, splits, and each half grows to match its counterpart in a wonderful demonstration of symmetry in nature. In this tiny underwater world, the skeletons of diatoms are like jewels of startling variety and beauty. They and other minute life forms 
flourish in such billions and trillions that their remains over the centuries may form great deposits, some of which have considerable commercial value, for example, in use as chalk, as polishing agents, or in making explosives. These are some of the things you'll find in a jar of ordinary pond water, an invisible world unlocked for you by the microscope, if you have the curiosity to turn the key.